Do you ever have one of those days where you're just not feeling coordinated at all? That's me today. But like you really wanna perform a trick to impress those people over there, but your palms are sweaty, knees weak, arms are heavy, there's vomit on your sweater already, and if that's the case, don't perform. People do not like vomit. Let me tell you though, if you ever find yourself in this situation and you still wanna impress people, I got you. What up crew, it is Magic Monday and this is your place to learn magic, master your performance and captivate audiences. If you're joining me for the first time, hi, my name is Vineet and I go by Card Mechanic here on the tube. If you want a card trick, you can do it immediately after watching this video. Make sure to smash that like button, subscribe and stick around. Now, let's do it. All right guys, so check this out and because you guys always ask, today I'll be using the Pink Panther playing cards. So we'll start off by taking the cards right out of the tuck case, you know, which is kind of a, kind of a usual thing for us at this point. Then we'll give the deck a quick little shuffle and that should be good enough, right? Something like this. And uh, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna split the deck in half, right? That's about half. Close enough to half as possible, okay? Let's say we have two spectators. Spectator one standing over here, spectator two standing right there. So I'm gonna allow the spectator one to select either pile they want. And the pile they select is the pile they're going to use. So let's say this pile right here, spectator one can take that pile, that leaves spectator two with this pile. Now spectator two can go ahead and select any card they want from their pile. Let's just say this card right here. So remember, this is Spectator 2's card. I'll show you that in a minute. But I think first I'll show you Spectator 1's card. So they can also do the same thing. Go ahead and pick out any card they want from their pile. So Spectator 1's card, take a look and remember it. All right, hopefully you got that memorized. We'll leave it right here, Spectator 1's side. Spectator 2's card, take a look, remember it. Hopefully you got that memorized and we'll leave it right here. Now we're gonna take this one step further. I'm gonna ask Spectator 1 to take Spectator 2's card, put it somewhere randomly in their pile and square it up. I'm gonna ask Spectator 2 to do the exact same thing, put it in their pile, square it up. All right, now the Spectator can go ahead, shuffle up pile number one. That's good enough, I think. And Spectator number two can shuffle up pile number two with Spectator 1's card inside. Now, me being the performer, I have no idea what card Spectator 1 selected, but I have no idea what card Spectator 2 selected. I don't know. All I know is this is a pile, this is another pile. But I'm gonna do my best to go ahead and look for the pile, uh, look through the pile and find the Spectator's selected card. So this is pile number one. Spectator 2's card is in pile number one. Uh, let's, let's say this one. I think this is Spectator 2's card. I'm gonna go through this pile. I can feel the calls. I can feel the cards calling out to me. I'm being drawn to this card. No, no, this is very strong, but no, I think it's this one. This card in particular is calling me. I'm gonna say this is spectator number one's card. So for the first time, spectator number one is gonna confirm his card. He's gonna say what? The six of spades, and there it is. The six of spades, and what's spectator number two gonna say? The nine of clubs, and guess what? There it is the nine of clubs. Here we go, welcome to the tutorial. Hope you guys enjoyed that little performance. So uh, to give you a little bit of background, this trick is known as finding a selected card by John Skarn. And uh, I wanted to do just a slight variation on uh, his original method. So uh, yeah, I think with that knowledge, let's go ahead and break it down. This trick does require a bit of a setup. I did make a slight variation as I mentioned um, on this trick. So the setup I do is a little bit different, but I do like this a little bit better. So um, what you need to do is split the deck into two piles, okay? And uh, the what you're gonna do in these two piles is one pile, you're gonna put uh, one suit and another suit. And in the other pile, you're gonna put another suit and another suit. And I saying that, it sounds horrible. So for example, on one half of the deck, I have all diamonds and clubs. So you can see I have all diamonds, clubs, diamonds, clubs, until we get to about the center. And then from here, I have all spades, hearts, spades, hearts, spades, hearts, okay? So of course, feel free to use any kind of method to split up the cards in uh, any way you choose. But um, I do feel like this is kind of an intermediary between uh, John Scarn's original method of using all black and all red versus, you know, having maybe a stack where you can actually show the cards to the spectators. Because in this case, if the cards flash towards the spectator, right, they may not be able to tell this is all diamonds and clubs, they may not be able to tell this is all spades and hearts, but if you use a stack, right, they will not be able to differentiate between this pile and this pile. So just something I wanted to share, but uh, the method that I'll be using just to keep things simple is diamond and clubs and spades and hearts. So uh, starting off this trick, you have that set up all good to go. 
And I like to begin by giving the deck a false shuffle or a false cut. So in my performance that I just did, I gave the deck a full deck false shuffle. And I do have a tutorial on it. I'll put a link on the screen. You can check it out. But this is pretty much where I take the deck and uh, it's a little difficult to talk while doing it because I have to make sure I'm doing it correctly. But uh, the overhand shuffle looks something like that. And the deck remains in, uh, in order. Not that you can really tell from this deck. But the deck remains in order. You can also give it a couple of false cuts. I have tutorials on those as well. There's a bunch of tutorials on a lot of things. You can, you can check everything out. Just explore the channel. But anyway, once you've given the deck that shuffle, of course, in this trick, you use two spectators. So uh, you break the deck in half. Now, this does get a little bit complicated if you're not too familiar with, you know, around where the center point of the deck would be. So what I'd recommend in uh, doing this setup is get a good grasp of what card is approximately at the center. Right, so here I believe this is the center. I'm not, I'm not the best at this, but I believe, yeah, this is the center. This is the exact divide between clubs and uh, clubs and diamonds and spades and hearts. So you want to kind of, when you're doing this setup, get a good grasp of what the last card is for the top half. So when you do cut the deck at that point, you can kind of verify to make sure that that card belongs in the top pile and uh, everything is good, all right? So you have those decks split up into two piles, and I think from here you can pretty much figure out exactly how to do it. But I want to walk through it a little bit more just to kind of talk about performance. So uh, I like to give as much freedom to the spectator as possible, just to keep it a bit more interactive, you know, have, have a little bit more fun. The more fun you have, the more fun they have. So here we go. Um, ask spectator one to select any pile. They select this one. Spectator two, of course, is left with this one. Maybe if you want to make it more interactive, you can have the spectator give... Yeah, give the spectator the option to take this pile or swap with spectator number one. Just, just some food for thought. All right, so we have that done. Now, of course, they each pick a card from their pile. Oh, she's making a mess. Spectator number one, let's say, picks queen of hearts. Spectator number two selects, you know what, we already did on a club. We're gonna change it up. Selects the two of clubs, all right? Of course, um, they shouldn't show each other, or they can if they want to, but they don't show each other, they don't show you. And they ask the other person to lose it in their deck, or you tell them to give it to the other person, the other person loses it in their deck, and they each shuffle up their pile. Okay, and as this is going on, you can kind of do a bit of a recap of what's happened. You've said you've shuffled up the deck, each spectator was able to um, select which pile they wanted, each card selected was a free choice, and the cards were shuffled. And this kind of builds up a bit more tension as the trick uh, moves forward. So now that that's done, what you can try to do is um, you can take a look. And this is where I didn't really do too much performance with it because you can't really see the spectator's reactions if I do this type of performance on, on camera. All right, so the first thing you do is pick up the pile and you'd be looking for a diamond or a club, uh, especially because, you know, since the things were switched, so you'd be looking for a diamond or a club in the hearts and spades pile. And we find a club and that we know that is uh, spectator number one's card or spectator number, yeah, spectator number one's card is the two of clubs. All right, so now that's what we know. So what you could potentially do for the reveal is if you know what card it is, for example, so here we know it's a fourth card from the top, right? So what you can do is you can even split out the card or spread out the uh, playing cards like this and kind of have a more interactive session with the spectator being like, okay, well, where do you want uh, the card? Where do you want my hand to stop? And regardless of what they say, just, you know, stop a little bit closer to that area. You can get rid of half the pile. And just having this build up builds a bit more suspense and ultimately you end up on their card, the two of clubs. So of course that's impressive in itself because you had no idea. And now, same thing with the second one. You can use the same method. You can use a different method. You can use um, I'm getting a slight feel from this card. I'm not getting much of a feel from this card. And did I lose the card? No, there it is. And you reveal the queen of hearts in whatever method you prefer. But do let me know down in the comments, if you do any kind of tricks like this, what kind of methods that you like to use to kind of uh, bring the spectator's card to light. But that is Finding a Selected Card by John Scarn. By the way, did you see my new Canis Lupus t-shirt? I, oh, I only have one, so maybe I, maybe I shouldn't be advertising yet. But what did I tell you? Do you think you could perform this card trick right now? Absolutely you can. And if you can't, message me immediately. I wanna know why. Anyway, I truly hope you enjoyed this card trick. If you wanna check out something similar that doesn't require as much effort, make sure to check out that video right there. I think you'll like it. Thanks so much for spending your time with me. It's always a pleasure when you're here. Hope you have a great day ahead and I'll see you really soon.
Peace out.